Hi, Chem students. I'd like to introduce you to a tool called the ice table. So this, this tool is going to help us solve most of our equilibrium problems that are challenging. So uh, just if you want to know, there's really two major forms that you see uh, of questions about equilibrium. One is we give you the initial amounts and we give you the equilibrium constant and then ask what will the system be like when it reaches equilibrium or vice versa, we can give you the initial amounts and the final amounts, and from that you can tell me what the equilibrium constant is. You should be prepared to see one or both of those on your next exam, which covers equilibrium. To do so, you're going to need to use this thing called an ice table. In an ice table, the ICE, and that stands for initial, change, and equilibrium. Let's take a look at an example uh, and see if we can make sense of this thing. So here's our model one. We're given the reaction. We're given the equilibrium constant, and we're given the initial state of the system. Over to the right, I've created an ice table, but the question is, how did we come up with this? What does everything mean? Well, the initial should be fairly straightforward. That's where we're starting with, and this picture tells us what we've got to start with. We use the legend where squares, circles, and triangles represent the number of moles per liter inside this container, and as you see, there's 10 squares, so we got a 10. There's three circles and there's five triangles, and that's where we get that particular row. This is normally given to you in the problem. We're, we're normally going to tell you, here's where we're starting. The question will almost always be, where do we end, or what is the equilibrium constant? All right, so we know where to get this initial row. The question is, what do we do from here on out? Well, you start by asking the question, what is Q? Because if we know what Q is, we can compare it to K, and then we can see which direction things are going to move. So we're going to find out what Q is. And you need to do this. Don't just write down a number on your calculator. Write it out so that people know what you're doing. It's the concentration of B divided by or multiplied by the concentration of C squared divided by the concentration of A. And if we plug that in, we get 3 times 5 squared divided by 10. That's 25 times 3, that's 75. I get 7.5 is my answer. And what I know is that Q sub C is less than K sub C. So I'm going to shift to the right. So the, we need Q is going to increase until it reaches K. And the only way for it to do that is to produce more products because the products are in the numerator of the expression. All right, so we know we're going to shift to the right. If that's the case, Think about what shifting to the right means. It means that reactants are used. So we're shifting right. That means reactions are used and products are made. That means any change in concentration for the reactant since they're being used will be negative. Why? The concentration will go down. And any change in the product's concentration will be positive. So, if you take a look over here in the change, the reactants all have a negative sign and the products all have a positive sign associated with their change. The only thing left that we have to find is, where did I get this x, x, and 2x? Well, it goes like this. If I look at A and I assume that I use some amount of it, Okay, let's say I use 1A. For every 1A, according to the stoichiometric relationship here, there's for every 1A, I'll make 1B, and I'll make 2Cs. So if I use X of these A's up, we don't know how many, some variable X, I'm going to make XB's, and I'm going to make 2XC's. And you can see that just right here. It's all calculated out for us. For every X moles of A, the stoichiometry says one mole of A is going to make for me one mole of B, and so I'm going to make X moles of B because the moles of A and the moles of A are going to cancel out. So now we see how we fill this in. It's always going to be a positive or a minus, and it's going to be the stoichiometric coefficient. 1, 1, 2, minus 1X, plus 1X, plus 2X. And we get the minus sign and the positive sign by looking at Q and seeing how it compares to K. The only thing that's left to do in your ice table 
is to add them up to see where we're going to be at equilibrium. So this last row, the equilibrium row, is really just a statement of 10 plus negative x, 3 plus positive x, 5 plus 2x. And I now have at my disposal a very nice set of numbers that are available for me to use in equilibrium. So what I can say from this is that k sub c is equal to b at equilibrium times c at equilibrium squared divided by a at equilibrium. But you know what? This is a at equilibrium. This is b at equilibrium. And this is c at equilibrium. So I can plug those in and I'm going to have 3 plus x times 5 plus 2x. I have to square that. Why? Don't forget, c is squared, c is squared, divided by 10 minus x. This right here is one has only one variable in it. If we can solve for that variable, then we can solve the whole problem. And in essence, this is where equilibrium problems start. Building an ice table and realizing that when we get finished, the ice table gives us this mathematical expression of our concentrations and we'll have the if we're given the equilibrium constant, we can solve for it. There you go. I hope this helps you make ice tables and understand where they come from.